Excuse me, my dog. Hi, right, guys. I don't know if you can even. That thing just. <laughs> Anyway, I have no idea if uh, my face is even in this video, but who cares? So anyway, it is turning into a fairly pleasant spring day here in the end times in the great state of Texas. It is now Monday, April 10th, 2022. And guys, I honestly, and all joking aside, I do not know if I have corona panic right now or not. This is the sickest I have been in uh, probably a couple of years. The old sore throat and sniffles and the whole bit. So uh, I have no clue and I don't see any reason to spend the $10 uh, to find out whether or not I supposedly have Corona Panic. But I think it, since it is Monday, it is that time again for the uh, Corona Panic Chronicles here on Humpty Dumpty Tribe for the few people who want to hear it. And, uh, so, well, I guess, you know, while I have been out partying in the state of Texas like it's 2019, good God, I got so many things open here. Uh, right here, the third biggest story um, the third biggest story on the planet. Why do I have so damn many uh, things open? Anyway, from the Washington Post, their biggest story on the planet this morning, the elite D.C. social scene sees a rash of corona panic cases, but parties on! All right, to party or not to party, that is the question. Washington got a crash course in risk-reward ratios after a spate of bold-faced names tested positive for corona panic this week. Don't forget our esteemed Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, uh, has Corona Panic. The mayor of Washington, D.C., Muriel Bowser, has Corona Panic. Attorney General Merrick Garland has Corona Panic. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo and Senator Susan Collins all uh, announced they got Corona Panic after attending the exclusive Gridiron Club dinner on April 2nd, but none of this has slowed down the juggernaut that is the city's elite social scene. After two years at home, the power brokers of the nation's capital are determined to get back to the serious business of having fun. The calculation, the calculation being made by Washington's elite, <clears throat> the rewards outweigh the possible risk of catching the milder variants, plural, of the disease. So obviously the, uh, the Washington power elites have been listening, as we all should, to Anthony Fauci. And so finally, I have, I have determined that Anthony Fauci has been tuning in to Humpty Dumpty Tribe. Anthony Fauci has been tuning in to, and now quoting Hambone Littletail, we have uh, <clears throat> Anthony Fauci, quoting pretty much a, I, I, pretty much a direct quote. A uh, little bit of a paraphrasing of what Hambone Littletail has been saying about Corona Panic since day one. Fauci says people should decide individual risk for Corona Panic. Dr. Anthony Fauci advised that individuals will need to decide for themselves their personal level of risk for events and corona panic exposure 
going forward as people learn to live with the virus. Quoting Anthony Fauci, sounding a hell of a lot like him on Littledale. What's going to happen is that we're going to see that each individual is going to have to make their calculation of the amount of risk that they want to take. If you did not hear him the first time, it is going to be a person's decision about the individual risk they are going to take. We are at that point in many respects. We're going to have to live with some degree of the virus in the community. <clears throat> wow, how about look at the evidence on the table that is available to Anthony Fauci, to Hambone Littletail, and anybody else. Look at the evidence, spend a little bit of time over there on percentage calculator, look at the evidence, decide for yourself how you want to respond to the level of risk. And if you, uh, it's a free country. It is an individual decision what they want to do after they look at the facts on the table <clears throat> and decide how to respond to it. Thank you, Anthony Fauci, and uh, for, uh, he did not give me uh, credit for that although I've been saying exactly that since day one. It's all pretty much I have ever said. Okay, so I, uh, all kinds of stuff about Shanghai, but before we get over to Shanghai, since everybody else is talking about this outlandish uh, Orwellian lockdown in Shanghai, uh, we're going to go over to Africa, uh, where once again, the World Health Organization, the World Health Organization has finally discovered Humpty Dumpty Tribe, where I have been saying, I remember, I, I, I tried to find the rant so I could play it, what I was saying like a year ago, looking at the corona panic numbers for Africa and putting it up against this article as the World Health Organization and all of these other health experts try to figure out why so few people are dying of corona panic in the uh, continent of Africa. So we're going to first uh, look at this article from Associated Press and then we're going to spend about five minutes uh, <clears throat> um, percentage calculator and the World Health Organization's uh, own site. All right. Up to 65% of Africans have had corona panic. Far more than thought. We have a new far more than previously expected. The World Health Organization, you know, the United Nations World Health Organization said last week that up to 65% of people in Africa, my guess is it's a lot higher than that, that up to 65% of people in Africa have been infected with the corona panic and estimates the number of actual cases by cases meaning testing positive cases may have been nearly 100 times more than those reported. Wow, and a new analysis released Thursday, the UN Health Agency reviewed 151 studies of corona panic in Africa. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, WHO said that by sep last September, 
so six months ago, uh, about 65% of people tested had some exposure to corona panic, translating into about 800 million infections. In contrast, only about 8 million cases had been officially reported to the World Health Organization. Wow. Uh, this is uh, WHO's Africa director, Mashido Moeti. Quote, this undercounting is occurring worldwide, and it is no surprise that the numbers are particularly large in Africa, where there are so many cases with no symptoms, whose analysis found that a large proportion of people you know, who tested positive for corona panic, 67%. And this uh, sample showed exactly zero symptoms when infected with the disease. Despite repeated warnings from the WHO that the corona panic would devastate Africa, the continent has been among the least affected by the pandemic. In its new analysis, WHO said <clears throat> the milder <coughs> the milder corona panic cases seen in Africa were attributable in part to the continent's much smaller proportion of people with underlying risk factors like high blood pressure diabetes, and heart disease, which is three ways of saying fat people, that the obesity rate in Africa is a tiny fraction of the obesity rate in uh, this country. They never mention the age, the median age of Africans, which we're going to talk about, but what they do say is... Quote, Africa's youthful, Africa's youthful population is also a protective factor. Thank you. Uh, I have been stating since day one the reason there's so few, uh, it's such a non-problem in Africa is because there are no old, fat sick people. Africa is a continent of young, skinny, sick people. They're just sick from uh, different things. Uh, to date, Africa has officially reported 11 and a half million corona panic cases, including more than 250 deaths. I'm sorry, 250,000 deaths. Okay, so we're just going to hop over and do a little bit of reading between the lines. Obviously, starting with the population of Africa, 1,216,000,000. So, 250,000 out of 1,216,000,000 is 0.02%, meaning 99.98% of Africans have not died of corona panic. For all you little uh, panic sheeple uh, mask Nazis claiming you cannot uh, believe any figures coming out of Africa if it were 10 times as many people, okay? If it was two and a half million, that means 99.8% of people in Africa have not died of the corona panic. That 998 is 10 times 99 
0.98, the difference of 0.8 and 0.98, you see what I'm saying, is 2,250,000 people. It doesn't matter. 250,000, two and a half million. It is a hell of a lot more than 99% of Africans have not uh, died of corona panic. And then we're going to take a look. We're going to compare the median, the median age of the U.S. and Africa. The median age of the U.S., I was surprised, 38.1 years old. So 50% of Americans are younger than 38.1 years old, and 50% are older than 38.1. Now, I couldn't get the figures for people, the percentage of people over the age of 70. Uh, but the median age, and this is the most terrifying uh, factoid I've discovered at all, uh, the median age for Africans is 19.7 years, pretty much one half the median age of the U.S. One half. This means that 600 million Africans, well, probably 700 million Africans, are under the age of 20. And you can thank Bill Gates more than any human being on the planet for that statistic. One half of the population of Africa is not even 20 years old yet. That could be a whole nother rant, but we're trying to find out why nobody in Africa, well, 0.02% of Africans. Okay, now we're going to go to the median age in the U.S. is 78.79 years. And in Africa, it's, I'm surprised by this, and I have a problem with it. Supposedly, in Africa, the median death age is about 64 and a half. I don't believe that for one minute, but uh, even so, but it's still, you know, about 15, the median age, uh, median lifespan is about 15% uh, less than the U.S., although, as I say, I really question that statistic. Uh, and if it is that high, the person you can thank for both the uh, median age and the lifespan of Africans is Bill Gates, his vaccination program in Africa. But uh, speaking of vaccination rates, and uh, guys, I, I, I'm taking this right off of the World Health Organization. You're going to make your own conclusions, but this is just a little factoid. A little factoid that in the United States, with a death rate, what are we, about 10 times uh, the death rate of Africa, th th this is purely just a little factoid that I'm quite sure has nothing to do with anything. I am making no conclusions about this. I just thought this was an interesting factoid from the World Health Organization as long as I'm over here. 77.8% of Americans have had at least one dose of the vaccine in Africa, 16%. 16% of Africans have been vaccinated, 84% of Africans have not been vaccinated. They're screaming on the World Health Organization how we they have to ramp up the vaccination campaign in Africa uh, by six times, I guess, uh, when Africa has by far and away the lowest death rate from corona panic and 
by far the lowest vaccination rate. I am not claiming that has anything to do with anything. I've never said that has anything to do with anything. What it has to do with is Africa is a young, skinny continent. We're an old, fat continent. They do not have the comorbidities in Africa. This is where you get into that pesky difference in the definition of of and with. But we're not going to open up that rant. But we're going to go from Africa over there to Shanghai. All sorts of, uh, this is from the mainstream. Here, here, here's just some on the mainstream media from Shanghai uh, this morning. Let's see where my Shanghai mainstream media. Here is from Quartz. Shanghai lockdown, quote, we're more scared of government measures than of the virus. Here is Shanghai residents running out of food in Corona panic lockdown. Uh, here is the U.S. State Department warns citizens traveling to China of risk of family separations and strict corona panic controls uh, where the U.S. State Department is now saying do not travel to China. The, the Minimally what's going to happen to you is you're going to be thrown into quarantine uh, for 14 days when you get there. So uh, all of these uh, articles and uh, I like the one that Brother Jeremy found. Oh God, where is it? I have 500 windows open. This is, uh, JJ sent me this one from India today. So this is the mainstream media. This is India today. Shanghai locals scream from windows and protest as city faces food shortages. Yes. As corona panic cases in China, Shang, Shanghai, as they left out the verb, as corona panic cases in China, Shanghai, I guess they meant to say rise, the one-party government is showing no signs of easing the stringent lockdowns it is imposed on the city of 26 million People in the financial hub are reportedly running out of food, water, and other necessities with many said to be on the brink of starvation. <coughs> Videos are doing the rounds on social media showing the people of Shanghai complaining of lack of food and medical care. Barred from leaving their houses, they took to their balconies to scream, sing, and lend voice to their anger, fears, and suffering as, Sh as Shanghai residents yelled out their frustrations from their balconies and windows. The government's response to the outcry was, quote, control your soul's desire for freedom, close quote. Yes, control your soul's desire like something out of a dystopian science fiction movie. Shanghai authorities allegedly deployed drones which broadcast the message, quote, control the soul's desire for freedom and do not open the window to sing. Yes, this behavior has the risk of spreading the endemic. Opening your window 
and letting in fresh air. Letting in fresh air. Okay, and getting in your window uh, and, and breathing out your window. Uh, I, I mean, people on the brink of starvation, people being hauled away to these detention centers against their will. And uh, once again, repeated here, uh, how many, number one, what percentage of people being uh, testing positive for corona panic in Shanghai, China, are showing exactly zero symptoms? They're quoting in the mainstream media today, 96% of these people, you know, supposedly testing positive, 96% of those people showing zero signs, showing less signs of corona panic than I am showing. And uh, every one of them getting hauled off to a, uh, to a concentration camp. Everyone they have come in contact with, whether or not they uh, test positive or not, they're hauled off into a concentration camp. Everybody else is locked down uh, in their houses, city of 26 million people facing starvation. Uh, global supply chains are, are going to see ripple effects from these lockdowns, but at least they're saying the price of oil uh, is down 2% because of the demand destruction from uh, these Chinese lockdowns. So, take a wild guess according to the mainstream media today, since March 1st, since March 1st until today, how many people, according to the government, have died of corona panic in the city of 26 million people? If your answer was zero, zero, zero percent, give yourself a gold star. Not one person has died of corona panic. Uh, since the beginning of March until today in a city of 26 million people. Of course, what, what Shanghai is doing is holding up this fact that the lockdowns are working. That the fact that not one human being uh, has died in, in that city of 26, obviously the conclusion is uh, that that is working. And, and, and it's evidence to continue the lockdowns. Now, there might be about 25 million people who are starting to say there's another way of interpreting that these lockdowns are a little bit of an overreaction. But uh, who am I to say? Uh, I just thank God uh, I do not live in Shanghai, China. And Texas is about as close to the oasis of freedom uh, as you can get outside of Florida. So I guess I sh should say I'm damn glad to be back in the great state of Texas where I realize I am uh, talking to myself and I need to go find my elderberry and vitamin C and zinc. Uh, to fight off whatever this shit is uh, uh, in my body right now. Bye, guys.